we are working on something a little crazy right now. We're building an outside radius corner. This is about a nine inch radius. Arlo is filling in the cracks between my framing here. It is curved, but I say kind of curved because it's kind of faceted. The way I decided to do this is to just rip two inch strips of wood, back bevel the edges so that the front face would be tight-ish. And we're just gluing these on here and nailing them. It's a little wacky, a little bit unconventional. And uh, you can kind of see what we got going on there. Tons of glue. All of our pieces have been installed and the edges were not perfectly flush. And it kind of had like a little bit of a catch in between each board that I didn't like. Now, <laughs> to fix it, we're simply, you know, just taking off the corners with a hand plane. And this thing is gonna fall somewhere in between round and faceted. I really kind of like the faceted look and feel because people are gonna be touching this and I think it's gonna feel cool. Um, so we're just gonna scrape down the high points here until we get a little bit of smoothness going. And there you have it, a semi-round, semi-faceted, somewhat old-looking, rounded corner. Ray is finishing up the very last of the nail hole filling, and he's gonna hopefully finish the paint today, too. What do you think, buddy? Oh, I'm gonna get it done. Get it done, that's what I like to hear. I'm about to do a slow-mo video of uh, paint drying. Oh, sweet, slow-mo yeah. of paint drying? Yeah, after I get Wow, done. that'd be awesome. Yeah. That'll get a lot of views. Pretty cool, actually, now that all the walls are almost done. Kind of makes the wood stand out more, which I really like. Bathrooms are painted out, looking nice. We're ready to put up some backer board here in the shower area and get ready to stick some tiles to the wall. Wow, that's more than 12. Or smarter, not harder. He brought the whole pile. And then he's gonna give me what I need, right? So he didn't actually have to carry any pieces off of the stack onto the lift. Pretty smart. I like that. Sometimes when you're installing backer board, the edge of the board breaks when you put a screw in it, especially near corners. It's a problem. <clears throat> to try to combat that, we're pre-drilling and pre-countersinking uh, some screw holes right here on the edges that we think are likely to break so that we don't have problems in the house. So here we go, we're getting started with this one. I got the back wall <clears throat> installed. I am going up the sidewalls. I'm leaving the hardest part for last, which is gonna be right here, which is not really that hard. You just have to drill two holes for the plumbing. And then up top, you've got the spout. You gotta drill a hole for that one. Hey, why are you painting your new boots? I dropped my brush, man. Real painters don't drop their brush, buddy. I should have tied it to me. Yeah. All you right. Know, block layers drop their, uh, drop their level no, down the, no. the hole. There you have it. One shower wall done with backer board. It's ready for fiberglass tape and a little bit of mortar or mud on the tape. And then it'll get a couple of coats of water sealing membrane and it's ready for tile. Cement board fiber tape is what we're using. It's extra sticky. If you use regular drywall tape, fiberglass drywall tape. It doesn't stick as much as this. He's putting some in there. You can see we taped down over the flange of the tub there. It doesn't there. stick to the flange. That's Not really weird. sticking. Okay, we're just hoping that the mud will fill in there. This this tub, I noticed it's really slick. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, it's it's unreal slippery, yeah. which is good for cleaning it, but which is why uh, we'll see. Okay, so we're just gonna mud that and see what happens. Yeah. I am gonna slick a little bit of tile mortar over the fiberglass tape. I bought some pre-mixed stuff for convenience right now, and I'm just gonna put it on with this handy little trowel. Gentlemen, do you know why we're here today? No idea. Hey, that's a great answer. 
I wish my kids would answer like that sometimes. We're here to lay tile. Okay. Well, I don't know if it's laying it, if it's on the wall, sticking it. We got four guys, we got two bathrooms. I'm thinking we'll break up into teams of uh, three and one. And <laughs> and then what? No, Ray's gonna be by himself and we're gonna have a race and see who gets done first. Ooh, it's dark in here. I should have brought some lights. Oh, that looks nice there. The green waterproofing stuff has been put on. That is good, everything's sealed up. So now we're just gonna stick a bunch of subway tiles. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's check out the other bathroom here. Well, it looks exactly the same, so it's not really, you know, anything special to, to look at, but here we go. Yep, looks the same. Man. All right, let's have a look at this tile. I just got kind of aggravated right now when I got this tile out of the box. This is like subway tile, um, but the thing is, I don't know what makes a subway tile a subway tile, but I can tell you that usually they have these little nubs on the edge that are self spacing and i don't see any nubs i see no nubs that means we have to use spacers which i'm not excited about also they're they're like side bowed these are all cupped these tiles are cupped all of them i guess it'll add to that old time feel that we're going for here so oh my gosh trendy subway look this has a trendy subway look, but I'm, I'm convinced this is not a subway tile. Now, like I said, I don't know what makes a subway tile a subway tile, but I'm pretty sure that these are not. They're made to look like a subway tile. I bet they were cheap though. It looks good, the blue. Do I have a bunch of those? Where are they? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some spacers. Oh, I do. Yeah, I got a bunch of those. Oh, that's, that sounds right. Score it all the way across there, give it a little yeah, okay. Maybe, uh, oh, it did. I didn't even hear it snap. Silent. Wow, so it worked. That was pretty easy. Okay. okay. Wow, wow, whoa. Wow. I was gonna say <laughs> we're laying tile in the dark, but the light just came on. What I need to do is figure out how tall these tiles will stack up to be. So I'm just getting an increment here. Say 24 and a half is, uh, is where we're gonna be uh, on a random, number of tiles but what that will allow me to do here is mark 24 and a half and then come up again 24 and a half and then go again 24 and a half all right there's a mark and then we got eight and a half left so let's go see what eight and a half gives us as far as ending at the top so eight and a half, look at that. Eight and a half is gonna give us about three quarters of a tile at the top. So that's actually pretty nice. Um, I think that'll, that'll work out just fine. Pretty much worth this is like sponges and uh, grout stuff here. This is, this is maybe just grout stuff. All right, we're gonna use that little plastic thing. Yeah, that right there, let me see that. Yeah, this right here, it's a little trowel, that's too small. That's too big, there. That's perfect. Yep, I like that. Let's let the race begin. And I went ahead and gave them, I went ahead and gave them a head start here with the, uh, you know, getting, you know, getting the bottom part done because I, you know, I felt like they needed a head start. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go take a coffee break for about an hour, and then I'm gonna get started so that I want to make the race fair. You know what I'm saying? the Swain County Inspections Department here. I was there because I'm signing a paper that will allow me to get my permanent power turned on to this house before the job is done. See, it's traditional for you to get the house completely finished and then request permanent power. But sometimes it takes a long time to get permanent power even after the house is done. It's kind of a hang up. Also, it is very handy to have permanent power on the house while you're finishing. So you can plug, you know, some of your tools into any of the outlets in any of the rooms and you can actually have heat and air conditioning. So that's a real plus. So that's what I'm doing right now. I got my paper signed. 
you have to pay a fee to get an extra inspection and for them to approve this and send the paperwork to the power company. So it does cost like 50 bucks, but that's totally worth it. Totally a good thing to do. I would recommend that anybody do this if you're building a house. So uh, here we go. We're gonna finish up the tile today, I hope, and uh, get on to some of the next things. I think the very next thing I'm gonna be planning to do is porch railings. And then we could also stain the deck surface here. Oh, look who decided to show up today, Mr. Ray. Uh, he shows up every day on time, actually. So we gotta build stairs right there. We gotta build a beautiful little stairway leading right to the front door. That's gonna be fun to do. Get our railings in. The railings are gonna be wood, made of wood. They're gonna be painted white. It's gonna be very picturesque and quaint and very cottage-like, I guess, is the, is the way I would describe it. buttered right there with the groove trowel. The wall is already pre-buttered with a smooth trowel. And I'm just gonna stick it right there, give it a little wiggle. I actually kind of pound on it with my fist like that a little bit because it helps it seat in and make sure that the mud spreads out. And then I'm just gonna take my little spacers here, put them underneath, put them underneath, get it right, bang on it a little bit more. So check out our tile cutting area. You can see we had tons of cutoffs, but this tile is really cheap. Actually, we did both of these showers for under $200 in material. Jono here is gonna demonstrate the cutter for you right there. It's just got a little tiny hardened roller that will glide across the tile and then you press down with the foot and it breaks. I mean, and this tile is pretty soft actually. Uh, the coating on it, Let's see here. Oh, and he's using a sanding block to uh, smooth up some rough edges. Yes, it's actually soft enough. The, uh, the material this is made out of some kind of whatever it is. I don't even know what this is. I don't know if it's ceramic or porcelain or clay. It's pretty soft. Yeah, it's a great story. It's, it's soft, yeah. Hey, cut guy, would you quit hogging the, the cutter? Quit hogging the cutter, would you? Some of us had to do it twice yesterday because my man over here. Hey, bud, you got to cut on the tile for it, too. I know. Uh, it's not going up. Yeah, you got to do it right on top of the tile. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, snap. I want to talk about a few things that made this job relatively easy. One is that we are using one kind of tile. <laughs> There's no bulldoze tile. There's no accent tiles. There's no starting or finishing tiles. So that's one step to make an easy job, only one size of a tile. Next, there are no cubbies in this shower. All the soap is gonna be held in dispensers that are commercial hotel style dispensers that will stick on the tile with some extreme heavy duty adhesive tape. So that helped out a lot. Also, there's no edging like scooter strip to deal with. Uh, right here behind me, I don't know if you can see. Oh, right there. Anyway, the edges are gonna be covered with a piece of wooden trim. So there's no sluter. So I had a lot of cuts on the edges that did not have to be precise cuts. That made things fast. Another thing is that we made most of these cuts with a slide break uh, tile snapping tool. So I did not use a wet saw on this job. Uh, the only cuts that I couldn't do with that, like tapered cuts or cuts around the plumbing, I cut with a grinder with an abrasive like diamond disc. So that was really nice. Let's see, what else made this easy? Um, I don't know, that's about it. But, um, oh, also the pre-mixed mud. We used pre-mixed mortar, um, tile mortar. So we didn't have to go out with buckets and hoses and mix stuff. That made it easy. So there's a lot of things, little details that made this go pretty seamless 
and not turn out to be a huge hassle. 